Hello my millions of subscribers. Today I'm gonna talk about five challenges I stumbled across when I just started working as a beam technician. The first issue I met was I couldn't move up and down in the 3D view. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say here I have some ducts, pipes and electrical containment. If I select all the services and press BX on my keyboard to switch to the 3D view and have a clear picture. Now I'm gonna press WT on my keyboard to tile the views and see it side by side. Now I'm gonna press ZA to zoom all. Trace escape a couple of times. If I go to the 3D view, now here I have my walls, ceiling and slab. If I switch the discipline to mechanical, just to see the services clearer, as I said, ducts, pipes and electrical containment. Let me switch it back to the coordination discipline. And I'm gonna align it to the right hand side. And currently there is 100 mil distance between the underside of the slab and the top of the ductwork. And let's say I want to make it 150 and at the same time keep the same distances between the rest of the services. This means that I will have to move all the services down by 50 mil. So if I select all the services in the floor plan view, go back to the 3D view, and if I try to move uh, to use move command, it doesn't allow me to do so. I can't move it up or down. I can only move it to sides. So if I press escape just once, go to filter, I can see that I have also selected uh, lines. This is detail line I used for my purposes. As soon as it's selected with the services, it doesn't allow me to move you know, up and down in the 3D view. So if I unselect it, click the OK button, go back to the 3D view. And if I try to use the move command now and move it down by 50 mil, it allows me to do so. Press escape a couple of times. Next issue I met was SVP pipe slope. When I select the pipe in the 3D view and go to slope, I can see that slope control point is grayed out. This means that I can only change the slope to one direction. So what I can do instead is, if I press escape once, and here I can see that slope sign, it shows me that this end is gonna be, is gonna stay fixed at zero zero, and I can only manipulate this end. So let's say my slope is one to forty. I can literally type one to forty. So, as I said, this end stays fixed, and this end has gone up. But I want to make if I want to make it negative, I can again literally type minus one to forty. I'm gonna make it flat for now. But if I want to change the direction itself, I can click on this slope sign. And now this end is gonna stay fixed and I'm able to manipulate this end. So again, 1 to 40. And minus 1 to 40. I'm gonna make it flat. But if you have a system just like so and if I select it by pressing the tab key down just like so and if I go now to slope I can see that slope control point is not grayed out and I can manipulate it from here and make whatever slope I want to press skip a couple of times the next tip is fairly straightforward. Let's say I need to move this containment up. I'm gonna select it. 
I can either use the move command or I can simply press the up arrow key on my keyboard. But when I press the up arrow key, it moves with small increments. To accelerate the moving process, if I I would have to hold the shift key down and press up arrow key just like so. In the same manner, you can hold the shift key down and move it to the left hand side or to the right hand side and down as well. Again, without the sh without holding the shift key down, it moves with small increments. But as soon as we hold the shift key down and press um, arrow keys, it moves much faster. Press escape a couple of times. One more tip is regarding the floor plan views alignment on the sheets. If I go to the sheet A101 and drag level 1 floor plan onto the sheet and place it somewhere centrally just like so. And next I'm gonna drag level 2 floor plan onto the sheet A102 and place it somewhere, somewhere here. I'm gonna press escape a couple of times. So I want the grids on this sheet to line up with the grids on this sheet. And one of the ways to achieve that would be through guide grid. Let me show you what it is. If I go to the view tab, sheet composition panel, and select the guide grid command, I can either choose the existing one, but because we have not created any guide grids, I cannot choose anything. So the only, the only option I've got right now is to create a new one. I'm going to do that and name it um, just guide grid 1, basically leave it as it is, and hit the OK button. Now I'm going to go to this sheet and do the exactly, the same, exactly the same procedure. But this time I'm going to choose the existing one and the one we've just created. So again, any manipulation, because I want these grids, the grids on this sheet, to line up with the grids on this sheet. So any manipulation to the to the guide grid, I want it to be I want to make on this uh, on the sheet A101. So first of all, I don't need my guide grid to be so big, so I need to resize it. And you can see the minute I make adjustment to the guide grid, it affects both sheets because it is the same guide grid. As well as that, I don't. Um, I don't want the spacing to be this big, so I want to adjust it, which I can do in the properties dialog box next to the guide spacing. I want to make it 10 millimeters. And I'm going to select the grid, select the guide grid, press MV to move the guide grid to the intersection of the grids A1. And it's quite simple to remember where it is. So, but this time on the when it comes to sheet A102, I'm gonna move the floor plan itself. I'm gonna select it, press MV, and select the intersection of the grids A1 and move it uh, to the intersection of the guide grid, just like so. I'm gonna press ZA. So through this option I've achieved what I wanted, the grids on both sheets line up. And another way to achieve that would be through detail line. If I go to the annotate tab, detail panel, select the detail line command and I'm gonna draw um, a line from this corner to the intersection of the gr of grids. A5. I'm gonna press escape a couple of times. I'm gonna select this line, copy it to clipboard. Um, I'm gonna go to this sheet and align, uh, select the align to current view. And let's say this floor plan is not centrally, does not line up with the floor plan on sheet A101. So what I can do is I can select the floor plan, press MV to move, select the intersection of 
uh, grid A5 and move it to the end of the detail line. Pr press escape a couple of times. Press ZA to zoom all. Again, these are two options um, and which option to choose, it's up to you. Play around and see what's best for you. Another thing I had trouble with was when I modeled building services in the West Wing. And because the building was symmetrical, I could simply mirror everything to the opposite side, to the east side. However, Revit does not allow to mirror tapered transition. Let me show you what I mean. If I select the services, by the way, this is just a rectangular ductwork with a tapered transition. If I select the services, press DM on my keyboard to mirror, I get uh, an error which states that mirroring of the fabrication part is restricted. If I hit the cancel button. Now it's easy to see just one element and model it manually in the opposite side. But if you have lots of transitions, then it becomes quite challenging to find all of them. If I select the services, press DM for a mirror. And this time I'm gonna drill down to see the elements ID number. Again, if you have lots of services, this list is going to be much bigger. So I can write the IDs down. Let's say I can take a screenshot or use an Excel sheet. Then mirror everything without transitions. Uh, I'm going to hit the cancel button. If I select it, um, unselect the transition by holding the shift key down, press DM to mirror mirror it with, um, to the opposite side, just like so. And since I have all the IDs of the elements that can't be mirrored, I can go to the Manage tab, Inquiry Panel, select, um, hit the Select by ID button, and if I type the ID number of the element that, that can't be mirrored, uh, which is 355317 and hit the OK button. Then I can type each ID one by one to see what has not been mirrored and then model it manually to have a complete model. Again, this is a simple example, but when you have tons of services, it will be quite challenging to find the missing elements. And as I said, because I typed my ID and I know that this element is missing on the opposite side. So what I can do is just, as I said, I can model it manually. And to make sure that my model is complete, and again, because I've got all of the IDs, the um, ID numbers that can't be mirrored, I can type each one by one, um, I can type ID number one by one and find, find them all and model them manually to have a symmetrical model.